SCHD is one of the most popular dividend ETFs amongst investors of all time. It has earned this by providing investors with solid returns over the long term while also giving them a pretty sizable yield. However, SCHD is not alone in this world and there are many alternative high dividend ETFs that people actually prefer. One of these ETFs is VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. That is why in this video, I'll be going over the similarities and differences between the two ETFs, which one I like more, and whether I think either of them would be fit for your portfolio. Anyways, let's get right into it. Before we start this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel because I will be posting dividend stock videos just like this one every few days. Firstly, let us talk a little bit about the ETFs at hand. SCHD is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, a dividend ETF that focuses on maintaining a medium yield, solid and dependable dividend growth, and a bit of capital appreciation. The fund's primary goal is to mimic the total return of the Dow Jones Top 100. VYM is a similar ETF offered by Vanguard that also focuses on high-quality dividend-paying stocks within the United States. This fund tracks common stocks within the United States that pay above-average dividends, excluding all REITs. Unlike SCHD, its primary goal is to track the performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index. Both of these funds are passively managed, but it is worth noting that SCHD rebalances four times a year, while VYM only rebalances every six months. Now that we have talked just a little bit about the ETFs, let us dive into the actual metrics. So if we're going to measure the performance of these ETFs, we have to look at three things. The capital appreciation, the dividend yield, and the dividend growth. Looking first at SCHD, we can see that in the last five years, the ETF is up a little bit over 36%. Compare this to VYM, which is only up around 20% in that same period of time. Even though this five-year gain is historically pretty low for both of these ETFs due to COVID and the odd market conditions, both of these ETFs have pretty substantially underperformed the overall market because as you can see, VTI is up around 55% in the last five years. The reason behind the disparity is because as you'd expect, both VYM and SCHD lack a lot of technology exposure, which I will get into later when I discuss their holdings. That that being said, SCHD is the clear winner here as its price has appreciated around 80% more than VYM has in the last 5 years. Moving on to the starting dividend yield, VYM has a dividend yield for the trailing 12 months of 3.27%. This is slightly higher than their average yield over the past few years, but it isn't anything extraordinary for the ETF. Looking at SCHD, as you can see, it has a TTM yield of 3.77%. However, unlike VYM, this current yield is actually pretty high for the ETF as it has generally been in between 2.5% on the low end and 3.5% on the high end. This is because while the underlying dividend for SCHD has been growing, the price of the ETF hasn't, which means the yield has been slowly growing for the last two years or so. That means once again, in the starting dividend yield category, SCHD is the winner here as it yields slightly more. Lastly, let us look at the dividend growth, a metric that I think is super important to see how healthy an ETF or company is. As we can see, for the past five years or so, VYM has had an annual dividend CAGR of around 5% compared to 2022. This definitely isn't too bad, but it also isn't anything to be super excited about is that is pretty average and basically what you'd expect. SCHD on the other hand for the past few years has a dividend CAGR of around 14% which is actually really fantastic. The dividend growth has been outpacing the capital appreciation which as long as it remains sustainable is a pretty good thing. 14% is absolutely on the high end for most companies so for an ETF that already yields in the mid 3% that is very impressive and it actually ensures that your investment will yield more and more over time without you doing anything. So clearly in these first three metrics based on capital appreciation, starting dividend yield, and dividend growth, SCHD seems to be the winner in all three categories. But it is still worth noting that there are some other metrics that differentiate the ETFs further. The first one that I always love to pay attention to with ETFs is the expense ratio. An expense ratio is how much percent of your money the company who issues the ETF takes annually. Most of the time, the expense ratio is really small and therefore unimportant, but you should be really careful to avoid funds in ETFs that charge a high fee. That being said, with both of these ETFs, the expense ratio is just 0.0. 6%, which is super low and is generally something you shouldn't worry about at all. Even though expense ratios, in theory, can definitely eat away at your snowball effect, an expense ratio of just 0.06 is so low that it really won't, which is definitely a plus. Now the other thing I want to look at is the composition of both of these funds. So looking at the composition of VYM first, as you can see, it is definitely very heavily weighted towards finance, consumer staples, healthcare, and industrials. 
It is weighted so heavily in these categories that technology is only the seventh biggest sector in the portfolio. Now, although this definitely does mean it will grow less, which we have seen with the only 20% capital appreciation in the last five years, that really isn't the point of this ETF. The ETF is to be more of an anchor for your portfolio that will generally have a lower beta than the entire market and will invest in more secure companies. That being said, I'm not a huge fan of this sector makeup really because of how big financials is. 20% may not seem like a ton, but it actually really is. And when you consider how volatile volatile the financial industry can be, especially what we've seen of this year, you can see why this can lead to some issues. Moving on to some of their individual positions, as you can see, their biggest holding is ExxonMobil, their second business is JP Morgan, then Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and so forth. Now, out of these top 10 holdings, I actually really like all of them, which is definitely not something I could say about SCHD's top holdings. One thing that I really think you should pay notice to is that there's actually 453 different stocks in this portfolio. Now, as we will see soon, that is actually way more than SCHD actually has in their portfolio. What this means is that they will definitely be more diversified, but since it's less top heavy, if these top 10 stocks perform really well, VYM will not see as much success. That being said, I really actually like a lot of these holdings. All of these holdings are something I would have in my portfolio personally and wouldn't feel too bad about. In fact, JP Morgan and Broadcom are already stocks that are in my portfolio and ExxonMobil, Chevron, Home Depot, and AbbVie are actually stocks that I've thought about adding in recent months. Going to the second page really quickly, I think it's still worth noting. As you can see, it's basically more of the same. I overall think that the holdings in this fund, VYM, are actually pretty impressive and I don't think there's anything to really worry about, especially considering the fact that this fund rebalances. So if one of these companies is to do really bad, well, then it won't affect the fund for very long. Overall, the fund definitely has a few issues with the very heavy financial weighting, but overall, I think it's generally okay. Now, let's move on to SCHD, and as you can see, healthcare and industrials actually are the two biggest things in their portfolio, with financials being third and technology actually only being fifth. Technology being fifth actually makes sense, because as you can tell, the capital appreciation in recent years has been significantly better than VYM, which has probably been somewhat caused by this. Also, it probably has been caused by the fact that SCHD has less financial companies in their portfolio, which have performed very poorly in recent years. Generally speaking, I actually like SCHD a little bit more based on where they put their money as I think it's a little bit more balanced and it makes a little bit more sense. I think because of SCHD's investment strategy and what they've done here really makes sense for the fund and it also is a really good way to get access to both growth and dividend appreciation which they've been super good at. Looking at their actual investments, as you can see, their biggest holding is Amgen, then Avgo, then Verizon, then Coca-Cola, and then Merck and & Co, and then you can go down the list from here. One thing I really want you to note here is how top-heavy this portfolio is. Their biggest holding is 4.51% of the fund, and their 10th biggest holding is 3.67% of the fund. This basically means that these top 10 stocks make up around 40% of the fund, so the fund is super biased towards these stocks, and if these stocks are to perform really well, then so will the fund, but also vice versa. Going over this top 10 list, as you can see it's actually pretty similar to VYM. There's definitely a lot of overlap. Companies like Merck Co., Pepsi, Coca-Cola, AbbVie, Cisco, Home Depot, Pfizer, we've seen all of these on VYM. The main one that really stands out for me though is Verizon. I don't really like this company and it's one I really wouldn't invest in so seeing it being in third place is definitely a bit of a worry. Now I understand why they own Verizon is to make sure the yield stays up but I really do not think it's worth it in the long term and I hopefully think that when they rebalance they'll fix this because I think third is just way too much for Verizon. That being said, companies like Broadcom, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, AbbVie are definitely solid picks, so it's not too bad overall. Anyways, to summarize my opinion on both of these funds, I think both of them are pretty decent dividend funds to add to your passive income. That being said, it is pretty clear that SCHD is the winner of the two. SCHD's tried and true method has resulted in far better returns with a higher yield and high dividend CAGR. I also think that SCHD's fund allocation and the way they buy their stocks does make a little bit more sense, even though I do not like some of their top positions specifically. Verizon. Although I like Vanguard more personally over Charles Schwab, I would still definitely go with SCHD over VYM, which makes sense. It is one of the most popular dividend ETFs out there for a reason. I think that SCHD or VYM would be great counterweights to a tech-heavy portfolio. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. If you agree or disagree with me, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.